My name is Douglas Miller, founder of Zero Point Field Technologies, LLC. And my purpose today is to talk about what is possible with stochastic electrodynamics. I've seen stochastic electrodynamics thrown around in a lot of scientific papers by Hal Pudoff and Eric Davis. And essentially what it is, is it's a deviation or a branch of electrodynamics that moves away from quantum electrodynamics and moves towards this idea of stochastic electrodynamics, which includes things like uh, scalar potentials, scalar waves. So it's another way of unifying classic electromagnetism with quantum field theory. Yeah. So basically what, yeah. Oh, there you go. As Jason says in the chat, SED is basically quantum electrodynamics with the ether mixed into it, with the ether mixed in. So this presentation is really good. I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit. What is zero point energy? The lowest temperature kind of explains everything about zero point energy. How much energy is in it? If this doesn't look familiar, <laughs> you do not watch a lot of Ash and Forbes presentations because Richard Feynman, there it is right there. Richard Feynman calculated that the amount of energy is massive, massive amount of energy in the zero point energy field. We're not aware of this because we're in this equilibrium of zero point energy. And here's the virtual particle pairs. Now, how do we reach the virtual particle pairs? We achieve the Schwinger limit. We achieve the Schwinger limit. This allows us to interact and pull these virtual particle pairs straight out of the vacuum, straight out of the vacuum, been experimentally proven. And then manipulating the permittivity and the permeability of the vacuum, the speed of light is not actually constant, not actually constant. So looking through this, I just think it's funny because <clears throat> this is pretty much any one of my live streams reviewing zero point energy. The Casimir force is when you have two... Okay, so what he uses this idea of vacuum catalyzed fusion, this idea of vacuum catalyzed fusion is essentially Douglas Miller's way of unifying the concepts that I've been speaking about that, you know, not they're not exclusive to me. I'm not, I don't say I own these concepts, but the idea that fusion is a tap into the zero point energy. If we say that fusion taps into the zero point energy, then there must be a relationship between the zero point energy and the fusion process. And right here, this is what he's essentially saying. He's saying that the vacuum catalyzed a neutronic fusion. He's saying that the vacuum itself is another input. We create our electrical engineering system. The vacuum itself is another input into our circuit, the vacuum itself. And this is how you unify the idea of classic atom theory, theory of fusion, theory of nuclear processes with this idea of the zero point energy. This would also explain why a neutronic fusion would be the strongest tap because the zero point energy is electromagnetic. So the more dense electromagnetism, the stronger your EMP pulse is, the more interaction you're going to have. So a neutronic fusion, in theory, should be the most interactive. Very tiny, very small plates that are very close together. Facilities and the ZPF array. He offered me some wise counsel, which I hear. Cool details of the ZPF array uh, for IP purposes. So the 30,000 foot view is this idea I had. Can't we push off the quantum vacuum with nano propellers? So as we discussed, it's a MEMS array with millions of Casimir cavities on it. Now. Obviously, the Casimir cavities cannot be parallel plates because they would just get forced together. So they have to be non-parallel plates. You could call it wedges. And Pretty funny. I've said this exact same thing. So he's talking about how will we use the Casimir effect to produce propulsion. And he says, well, you can't have parallel plates. They just come together. So how do you produce asymmetric thrust? Just go like this. You go like this, and you're going to get asymmetric thrust. Number two is this CPF array is not designed for energy extraction. It is my belief that it is a lot more efficient to use it for navigation, not extraction. That's foundational cornerstone number two. And so with that, the Casimir cavities cannot be static. And really, that's all I can say about that. They are non-static Casimir cavities, which also means, number three, that they have to be powered. And so the ZPF array is powered by a battery with up to 10 watts of power. 
And when turned on, simulations show a directional thrust of between 0.6 and resistance uh, slowed. The exciting part is what happened next. I said hydrogen. I also incorporated Bowring. So what I did was, with their plasma fusion reactors, is exciting. Okay, hold on. Here we go. I think it's somewhere around here. That's what we're more familiar with, which is nuclear power plants. These things are dinosaurs. They're fossils. They're never coming back. They, they heated up, they boiled water to turn turbines for electricity, and to do it, they had nuclear waste. What people have come up with right now, and my favorite uh, example is Helion, what they are doing with their plasma fusion reactors is exciting. They plan on powering Microsoft's AI data center by 2028. They are working on this right now. It's never been done before. This is brand new. They're learning as they go. Brilliant minds love what they're doing. And it is a neutronic fusion. Well, what are they working on? They call it a field reversed configuration. What does that mean? That's just a fancy way of saying how they end up with their toroidal shaped plasmas. Nuclear reactors are just spinning a steam turbine. Isn't that stupid? Oh, a neutronic fusion, helium fusion is direct energy conversion. Well, what's a toroidal shaped plasma for the layman? It's a donut. It's a donut shaped plasma that they fire at each other. Two of them fire each other. They meet in the middle very fast, very hot. Why? To create a fusion of their deuterium and helium. When it fuses, it creates what? Alpha particles. That's uh, two protons, two neutrons, a helium-4, basically, that can be harvested with MHD coils at a nearly 95% efficiency rate directly into electricity. That's how they're going to power Microsoft's AI data centers. Now, you have power in. You have power out. Right now in the process, they're probably right about break even. But you need more power out than power in for this thing to work. So that's called a Q factor. Q equals 1 is break even. Q equals 2 would be twice the power out than power in. Q equals 3 would be three times the power out than power in and so on and so that is a okay so a neutronic fusion they're gonna get over unity without even hitting ignition they're not even gonna get ignition and they're gonna hit over unity i mean that's part of the reason why i'm so all in on helium fusion you tell me we're not even gonna need ignition we don't even need these high temperatures and we're gonna get over unity out of it and it's gonna be clean energy and it's gonna be direct energy conversion you had me at hello you had me at hello, helium fusion. I predict that he, for a neutronic energy will get to coefficient of performance, Q factors, well over 100, maybe even well over 1,000 in the future. So we would be happy with like Q factor of five, let alone Q factor of 100, just to give you some idea of how high I am on this technology. The big problem with fusion is that when you create your ions, you, you strip your atoms of their electrons and you're left with these positively charged ions. The problem is they're positively charged and they're they're going to reflect. They're going to push each other aside. They're going to repel each other. So we need to find a way to get these ions that would normally repel close enough together where they come together. Now, one way we can do this is we can make a giant soup of electrons. A giant plasma of electrons that clouds all the ions. And if we do this, then this is a theoretical way where we can reduce the Coulomb barrier. One of the things that we've talked about, though, is the vibration. Now, he mispronounces zit zitterbuagong here. It's not an easy word to spell, though, or pronounce. Zitterbuagong is this natural resonance that's always happening in the background. Zitterbuagong. You can imagine it's like the waves of the calm water. We've got the Zitterbuagong effect. And now if we amplify this resonance or if we apply a resonance effect, then we can amplify the Zitterbuagong. We can cause tunneling to occur through resonance, through frequency. Now, if you don't believe me, check out the paper that we took, at la we took a look at last week about resonance tunneling in for cold fusion. And you can see that the tunneling percentage goes significantly up at certain resonant frequencies. Not, not all of them are the same, by the way. Different resonant frequencies have different tunneling improvement. HRP zitterbuagong jiggles amplify screening, boosting tunneling probabilities and Planck's constant increasing, broadening uncertainties. And the ZPF array, this catalyzes a neutronic proton boron alphas at lower energies. Hydrogen flow plus fringing fields ionize gas, enabling nuclear pre-excitation. I wonder if nuclear pre-excitation is another word for uh, pre-ionization. 
one of the terms I get seen thrown around in uh, mag air breathing magneto hydrodynamics is pre ionization, which I don't fully understand it, but it sounds like it's some kind of creating the plasma as the air is getting sucked in or something like that. I am curious about that. Um, the last bit I want to take a look at is 58 minutes here. Okay, so he gets a standing ovation from the crew here. And something interesting gets mentioned here. That's awesome. You mentioned that you did not cover FTL. I would love it if you wanted to come back and talk about Listen to faster me. than light travel, wormholes, as well as drill down on avian neutronic fusion. That is yeah, an that, area. Oh, I'm sorry. That, that, that will be a, a future uh, thing. Wait, wait for this. Wait for this response right here. I'm sorry, but Tim Ventura either knows or I don't know how Tim Ventura doesn't know. Get ready for what he's about to say right here, guys. Pay close attention to what Tim Ventura is about to say. For sure. A lot of work to do on that, though. Yeah, it, it, well, and if I could interject for just a moment, I used to go to the ISNPS STAFE conference and aneutronic fusion, because it's not giving off certain types of radiation, right? It's not giving off those those fast-moving neutrons. That was something that was really exciting. In fact, I have some stuff uh, from Dr. Paul Sis on my computer that I'm working on creating a story about. That idea goes back quite a ways, and a lot of really leading scientists have been into it. So, so thank What? I'm definitely going to be paying attention for when Tim Ventura drops the Paul Sis a neutronic fusion connection, because if we're at this point, like we're through the rabbit hole, we're through the looking glass. And now you're telling me that a neutronic fusion, which we've discovered is the secret they've been hiding is, has a direct connection to Paul Sis, who's one of the authors of the Durds, friends with Hal Pudoff, who I've got this clip of pulses warning people that if we don't start taking these microwave technologies seriously, they're going to start showing up. And if you notice, it starts with, I have an idea. And you notice all the naysayers, a word of caution, a little too radical. We tried something like that once. Let me play the devil's advocate. As the guy says at the end, what was just an idea? There are there are a hundred people out there turning off lights to so one person that can keep the light lit. Chat, this is my goat. This is my number one spirit goat of all spirit goats. I have a lot of spirit mentors that come to me in my dreams. Came to me in my dream, chat. When people ask me, Ashton, how do you know the videos are real? I say, it came to me in a dream. That's how we determine if things are real now, per Candace Owens. Came to me in a dream. Paul Sizz came to me in my dream, and he told me, Ashton, the MH370 videos are an A neutronic fusion bomb. He told me. Never been wrong before. That's Paul Sizz right there. And first of all, he tells you the most inspirational thing ever. He says, we got to keep the lights on. People, the haters are going to come out and tell you it's not possible. It's not real. You can see the haters in the chat right now saying this is all fake. Don't look at this. Don't look at this. There's no science here. All these black project engineers that were literally warning you about this. That's all fake. Don't pay attention to that. Don't look at what you see with your eyes. And what is he going to say next? This is the same guy, by the way, that just a second ago, Tim Ventura said that he's got data connecting pulses to a neutronic fusion. This video is from the 90s. He's working off an overhead projector. I started out in business. My bosses always kept my life lit because they said, I don't want to know the reasons it won't work. I want to know the reasons why we can make it work. Today, all I hear is, yeah, I know you think there's one or two reasons it can work. Here's a whole list of things why it won't work. I guarantee you, I cannot find any set of circumstances. Or I can guarantee myself that I can cross the street out in front of the Hilton Hotel and not get hit by a car. Unless I block the traffic and do all these Ill, these I love this illogical guy. things that would make me not want to live a very useful life. Now, if we're not if we're not careful, if we keep shutting the lights off in the United okay. States, then one of these days, and I have leaks, lakes sitting right here in the audience, one of these days. We're going to see that light orbit, and that's a microwave powered spacecraft based on plasma propulsion. And one of those right now is flying in the former Soviet Union. I can't, I, I don't know if I can go over and touch it. That is a spacecraft, he said, using plasma fusion propulsion.
Did you just listen to the words that he just said? That looks like a UFO to me. I'm not an expert in UFOs. I'm going to go ahead and say that looks like a UFO. And he says, these are going to be parked. This is parked over the Soviet Union right now. And if we don't take this seriously, these flying UFOs using plasma fusion propulsion are going to be flying over our country. Oh, and what just happened last December? Oh, we had drones last December. We had drones flying over our country that nobody could say where they were from. Basically, Paul Sizz was right. There you go. Now let's listen and finish this up. I'm going to just go back a little bit. Based on plasma propulsion. And one of those right now is flying in the former Soviet Union. I can't, I, I don't know if I can go over and touch it, but I, I've seen the video of it. And it won't be too long if we don't enter the 21st century in the United States with that railway train to space so people can look up and say, this is what we've accomplished. This is what we can do. This is the end. We've made a tremendous economic breakthrough that's providing us the uh, our life, style, and the benefit and uh, economic base that we've never envisioned before. We can't do that, then someone else is going to do it. Thank you very much. That's the Paul Sizz that Tim Ventura has data connecting him to a neutronic fusion. I can't wait to get my hands on that data.